Hi, this is Mark from Jag Panzer. You're watching CMS TV. time i was 18 i was i was playing in bands and i had the bug man i was like i'm gonna make it i know it in my bones oh my god it took so long too um I, it was funny i from time to time i'll post this picture uh for my facebook when i was like 15 almost 16 years right. old i think and you know playing my amp, putting my amp in the foyer of the of the house closest to where i would see piercy walking his dog Okay, and to crank up this amp to try to like see if he'd look over or kind of start a friendship, music friendship somehow. Right, you know what I mean? <laughs> With my my young mind, I was like, mm -hmm. I, this is how I'm gonna do it. And I had this little amp, and I would just turn it up and do dive bombs. And right, uh, people love seeing that stuff. But sure. I I I enjoy looking at it from time to time just to see how far, how many years it's been, and all the journey mm -hmm. that it's been from like going from being in a local band just starting out playing sure. your first shows to like trying to get a record deal trying to do these things and you know you shoot for the the stars if mm. you will you shoot for the moon but it, if you don't make it you land amongst the stars yeah. right you shoot for the moon but you're stopped at the firmament in most cases yeah, right? stopped exactly <laughs> it stopped at the firmament <laughs> i couldn't get to the moon damn it i had a i gotta fall with the stars here and, right. and, it, and it is that you get good enough where you can get a gig with a somebody who's got some pull that can get you playing shows a, a classic sure. rocker if you will and i i really scored with that uh but but it took some well, time i mean the picture i posted be in 15 16 it would be another decade before Pierce would call me up to come well uh, here, here's him. i'm gonna tell you and, and tell me if i'm wrong because you've obviously done it and i haven't the place you have to commit on a level that most sane people will not and and i'll tell the story with with me i mean i was in a band you know, most people don't really realize that because I don't talk about it much because my band sucked. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, when I was 19 years old, 20 years or whatever I was, 20, 21, whenever I came back from the military, 21, 22, I was in, I had my band, Distorted Illusion, um, you know, and I played drums and I sang and um, we played like two gigs, two official gigs. And by the second gig, the guitar player was like, I can't play these gigs unless I'm paid at least $50 a show or whatever it was. Mm. This is a second fucking gig. You know, we did we did one gig that was, you know, of course it was a free gig. It was my buddy that owned the local Domino's let us come out and play for their uh, city day or whatever it was called, you okay. know, uh, customer appreciation day. And we played some of our stuff, and we played some Metallica stuff, which did not go over well. Oh. But most of the shit that we were playing was, you're my brown-eyed girl. You know, that kind of yeah. shitty 60s and 70s music. You know, that was, that was the gig. It. I mean, it was fun. It was fun, and that was the gig. But it was, it was our first ever gig. So we did that, and then we went to our second gig. And that was a little more of a gig gig, which we, of course, played for free. Went on at fucking seven o'clock or whatever time it was at a bar that was, you know, the headliner went on at like 11 and the headliner was just some local band. It wasn't like it was a, a national act. It was like four band bill and we're the six o'clock opener, that, that type of a show. Sure. Yeah. So we played that and, you know, we were practicing and rehearsing five days a week and, you know, all the things that band guys do. After that gig, the guitar player comes to me because I was the de facto band leader. And it comes to me and goes, I just got to tell you, unless I make 50 bucks or more a gig, I'm not going to show up for any shows anymore. And I was like, you okay, know Axel. <laughs> well, I was, no, I was like, you know what? I, but I took it to the upteeth level. I got really, really mad. 
Right. And I was like, I don't want to do with, I don't want to deal with this. And if I'm getting this now, it's never going to get better. So I just quit. I just said, I, I'm not wired for this. Yeah. And I quit. You somehow, some way, and I'm curious if you even know what it was. You somehow, some way have put up with 10 to 12 years worth of that kind of shit with something that drove you to tell you that you would get past it and get somewhere. Right. Do you know what that was? Do you, do you agree that you had some kind of drive that I did not? Cause I admit I did not. Well, you know, if, if, uh, you find yourself writing songs that, that people seem to like, and that's like getting some kind of airplay and stuff and you're 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 getting shows and getting to actually play in front of people and start getting a taste of that adulation you know your your dreams could possibly come true that there is a chance you could get this and get better at it and do it so like i i think the first gig i did i i've told you before was opening for our buddy ron keel right 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 and when he had his the band fair game which was yeah. all chicks he had right. it was ron singing and he had all chick band and that was the first gig the band i was in was called at the time was called poor white trash nice pwt and um the singer chelsea he is still playing to this day he's like a dave Grohl impersonator today he's in okay. a band called the uh Fal faust fighters <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say the F Faux F fighters? Faux, Faux, Faux fighters, yeah. Sorry, I never could say that word. Faux fighters. He's in the Faux fighters. If you look, if you look them up, he does a he looks like Dave Grohl. It's crazy. Nice. And uh he's got the guitar and they get pretty good gigs. I think he does I think he I don't know if he's making a living just doing that or what, but I mean to see the real Foo Fighters is probably like two hundred dollars. Right. So there's this, there is a market for people that just want to go to like a smaller bar and be able to go see all these songs get played live and get really drunk and spend less than 60 bucks. Right. So yeah. these guys play, man. They do. I, I just, what was it when you, when it wasn't happening for you, when you were playing, but it, but it wasn't, and there were no hints that it was going to happen. And I'm sure there's a big wide range of that. Yeah. You know, like years of that. There was. What was it that kept telling you, well, I just got to keep going. I got to keep, was it just, you were, you were wired that way or did you somehow believe something was going to happen? Well, when you have the frequency going that you believe something's going to happen, then usually another human being has that frequency too. And somehow you, Line, those frequencies line up and you okay and so i've always had like somebody or something that i was working with i was never like i i don't recall ever being completely alone in anything i mean i was doing my own uh solo band when i was playing in piercy's band but i still had his band to fall back on but previous to that there was always some project i was in i had that poor white trash thing mind you that only lasted like two shows and then we switched up I went separate ways from from uh fake dave Grohl chelsea <laughs> future fake dave Grohl. uh we went our separate ways we're friends today though he's totally on my sure. face he's very supportive of of me and uh and he's 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 happy to see me out playing and he's he's a very cool guy um but i ended up getting um andy milner which i've talked about which was martin the actor from adam 12 martin milner's right. son who was a great singer he was the best probably the best rock singer that was unsigned at the time um and we uh, at that time i knew piercy of course and, and and when we were jamming piercy was saying hey you know what you should call your band voodoo <laughs> it's like a disease like i got some voodoo <laughs> it, nice. it didn't even make sense what he said but we we said hey if you're if you're helping us and helping us to get us on the radio or saying you're managing us or whatever if we could say that we'll call the band that and so he actually had a hand in naming that band and we would go on to like do a serious like five years of trying to make it with this band and right. we, we put on shows our singer would like do all these crazy costume changes um i just recently had posted on, on my facebook a, a a picture of us playing the oceanside amphitheater here in like the early 90s and then i had in the comments posted um a video for the song that we had that was on the radio 
uh, here in San Diego at the time. I mentioned last show that we had sold a lot of records at the time, sure. like five five thousand records here just in San Diego, right. and we had the help of the radio station. We were like their their band that they used like whenever there was a national act that came through we got to play the show from that point so being involved in those kind of shows really made me think this is something i want to do i loved that aspect i had never been on tour or anything um you had mentioned dark times there were certainly times after that band ended where i was like just trying to find a band i i did the heavy band 13a here for a little bit and we ended up uh, winning the miller genuine draft battle of the bands here in san diego which was like mm. a 10 grand prize and like a recording uh, time at some whatever, right yeah city went well, at some crappy studio somewhere right <laughs> um i know i didn't see any of that money that was another band that lasted like uh like two or three years then i was um just writing songs with the one friend of mine we were going to start a band and and i was going to do something totally different than i've ever done more of like a pop kind of thing that what wasn't rock and then I got the call from Steven out of the blue to uh, play in a solo band. I'm 27 at that point. Okay. And uh, I, I took the chance. I took the dive. I went in and found out that touring and all like the debauchery involved back then, I loved it, you know. And um, I've been with him 23 years of the ups and downs right. of his career. But luckily, Rat was one of the top hair bands from then, and, and he's oh, had. Sure. He's been able to play clubs all the, all at least clubs you know all these mm -hmm. years and now we've worked it back up somehow miraculously he's playing big events now sometimes arenas we're all pretty old <laughs> now yeah. i mean i'm feeling it i feel old i mean i'm dead there's no more debauchery on my well, i was gonna say you you've lived <laughs> literally watched it go from the three p's you know to now there's no p's the three z's yeah that's it i was gonna say that's what it is now when you know hanging out with you guys last time i i saw you guys which again that was a while ago but last time i hung out with you guys it was fucking um eating um uh what are those little candies called that steven was eating when he was fresh off the junk <laughs> was it lifesavers or like some not, kind of uh, uh, dolly ranchers Skittles, but the, dolly the ones that are in paper tootsie rolls uh no, they, hard candy? They, they were they were flavored like a like okay. a lifesaver whatever they're called i don't remember right. somebody will tell me they're little squares they're wrapped in a paper and steven was eating them by the handful and that's all you guys had backstage was this giant bag of this candy and like bottles of water and yeah. i was like and i'm like this is fucking steven piercy for god's sake there's where's, there's where's the pussy where Ah, no, no, it's definitely none of that. And, um, you know, Stephen travels with his ladies part of it. No, but this was, program. that was 10 years oh, ago, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was no. when, that was He's 2012. Always He's always, as far, the whole time I've been the band, Stephen's been married or, you know, in the later Yeah, that's years, true. Had Christy, like, and, and there was none of that. Like, he didn't yeah. need any, any trouble in that, with that end. You know what I yeah, mean? So, I, there, well, I could, I'll attest to that. There was none of it. There was no the the only girl that was backstage was was kelly my my girl she right. was the she was the only girl backstage there's was, people that that are affiliated with the owners of the venue sometimes or like vips that they have right. come out you know in that capacity you know you typically like husband and wife you know right. boyfriend girlfriend scenarios coming couples couples if you will coming back there you know mm -hmm. they get photos and these things but it's all business you know it's um yeah yeah but, I, but I, whatever it was still fun we had a good time <laughs> yeah i mean there was years where we we were drinking and stuff like we yeah. the drinking stopped probably uh well it must have been around the last times that, that steven had the problems with rat you know on mm -hmm. stage whatever that was five years ago but that's okay because look steven you know i'll say it you don't have to but steven was struggling he yeah. got himself clean and he's better. He is Done really as good. good or better than he was in the day. And I saw him in the day, you know, I saw him right. in 84, 85, 86, and he wasn't as good then. His voice was maybe a little stronger then than now, but he wasn't as right. good of a performer then. As no, he's, he is he's, now. he's singing and uh, uh, performing better than he was 20 years ago, which is pretty amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when you, it's, it's tough to compare 
being 25 years old or yeah, being 65 65, years old, yeah. sure. you're going to sing things a little differently. I mean, um, I'm always impressed, though, when I see singers, uh, you know, Bruce Dickinson is, is a good example. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. if he's still singing everything up in the highest registers of his. Well, he's still he close. Was for the time. Yeah. Well, like Glenn Hughes. Glenn Hughes is amazing. Glenn Hughes sounds you know. like he did when he was 20, and that was 50 freaking years ago. I know. He's blessed. What yeah, I, I mean, say? it's crazy. But Now, yeah. uh, I know they were saying earlier that we uh, asked it about CJ. Yeah, well, Snare let's do this and... first. Let's play a quick spot. Okay. Just one quick spot, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about CJ. Because that's good. very, very unfortunate. Yeah, but I I need a place to cut this. So <laughs> so let me. Um, all right, we'll play a quick spot, and then we will come back, and we will talk about the un very unfortunate passing of C.J. Snare and how we both knew him a little bit, and we'll we'll talk about that next, right here on Chris Hagen presents. <laughs> It's the limited edition six big set from Eric Ferentino's. Get your autograph set today at ericpinks.cmspn.com. $25 includes first class shipping. I 